All right. Uh, <clears throat> uh, good evening uh, to everyone and greetings and uh, blessings of the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha to all of you. Uh, so let us uh, begin our session by paying respect and homage to the Buddha. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa I pay my respect and homage to him, the blessed one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened Buddha. <coughs> uh, dear uh, Venerable uh, Bhantes, Bhikkhus, Bhikkhunis, Ayas, um, it is such a great joy for all of us to um, meet on Zoom platform bi-weekly. Uh, bringing the Dhamma to uh, the people uh, who are uh, pretty interested in the wisdom of the Buddha to bring uh, uh, light and hope to the people around the world. And this is such a great uh, service I, I believe we are doing in the Western uh, Hemisphere. Uh, so we are live on Facebook and YouTube. Um, so I would like to uh, make a kind uh, request from all our friends who are watching us on uh, Facebook and, and uh, YouTube, uh, if possible, please. Uparatranaya uh, Kahamadro, he's joining us from uh, Virginia, the Washington DC. Then we have uh, Bhante Damrakita joining us from Calgary, uh, Alberta, Canada. We have Venerable uh, Tridel uh, joining us from Florida, USA. Uh, we have uh, Bhante Sanat Vihari uh, joining us from Los Angeles, California, USA. And uh, we have Bhante uh, Ananda joining us from Long Island, uh, USA. And we have Venerable Chanda Ananda uh, joining us uh, uh, from Ottawa. And we have Bhante Sankicha joining us from uh, Detroit, Michigan, USA. And uh, then we have uh, uh, Venerable Horon Bhante Anruddha joining us from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. We have uh, Venerable Kalabovila Ananda joining us from the same center, uh, Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And we have uh, uh, Venerable Potabala Sumeda who is all joining from Ottawa, Canada. Uh, so uh, I would like to uh, respectfully uh, welcome all of you to our bi-weekly uh, sutra uh, discussion. And uh, <clears throat> so today, uh, we have a very uh, interesting topic uh, for this discussion. We also have some friends who joined us uh, on Zoom platform, our lay uh, friends. I also would like to welcome all of you to this discussion. And uh, I also would like to give a warm welcome to our friends who are watching us on YouTube and Facebook Live. And once again, if possible, please uh, share this program in your social media timeline for the greater benefit of the people around the world. Uh, so today we have a very interesting discussion. Uh, the, the topic is, uh, is it harder to live a Buddhist life now than in the time of the Buddha? This is a, a question asked by one of our friends uh, who watch this program on YouTube, also in Facebook. And I think this uh, a friend uh, would like to know the honest feelings 
of the verbal monks and nuns, uh, whether you think it is harder to live uh, the Buddhist life now than the time of the Buddha. And uh, this is an uh, op uh, open discussion. Uh, if you would like to uh, you know, share your insights, uh, your experience or tell a story, uh, I would like to kindly and respectfully uh, invite the venerable monks and nuns to raise your hand so that you can, I can invite you to speak up. Uh, so, so far, nobody uh, has uh, raised uh, the hand. Oh, okay, I see, Bante Kusala. You just raised your hand. So, Bante Kusala, what do you think? <laughs> Thank you, Bante, for this wonderful uh, <clears throat> topic and the discussion. I wanted to share an initial thought um, that um, when... Uh, now I will take a modern example, like when Steve Jobs passed away, Apple did not um, vanish from the world. Mm. So the practices they have been doing, uh, they continue producing wonderful things. And um, speaking about the business world, their stocks uh, have so much value and they are becoming innovative and they are surviving in the world. So. When the Buddha passed away, he did not want his uh, dispensation, sasana, to vanish with him. He did not appoint any monk as the successor, mm -hmm. but I know that he said um, discipline and doctrine, uh, vinaya and dhamma, dhamma and vinaya, will be the successor. And if you if your conduct is according to dhamma and vinaya, um, you will do fine. And I think mm. we have a huge organization of monks uh, and we have uh, places and we have uh, spiritual practices available for us. The Buddha himself, you know, has given us the middle path. And I think the middle path can be practiced without uh, time constraint and without worrying about when it will be applicable. I think it mm. is applicable for any time. Uh, but I think the conditions such as, you know, having a Buddha around uh, <clears throat> will be so helpful at this time. Uh, um, if we have a Buddha now, I think we wouldn't be doing so many things that we are doing. And okay. if we have a Buddha now, um, I think we'll think of uh, him as we focus on our day's practice because uh, we have him as the spiritual guide and the teacher but because of the nature's way Buddha is no more with us uh, so again we don't have supporting Sangha um, as, as, a, as in the time of the Buddha but if you really uh, look for a spiritual home uh, many centers are around and if you, as you know, approach them, they will support you. Uh, it depends. You know, there are many flavors. It's like ice cream flavors. Many traditional <laughs> monks from different places, and uh, you might be wondering if this is the place that is right for us. Um, it's just like that. You know, um, conditions and people and places that we hear from the scripture, from the Buddhist sutras, will be different and may not be exactly how we feel the present day world. But I think the practice, uh, the Dhamma, the teachings, because uh, the Buddha says we can see the Dhamma within this very own body. And as long as we have a human body, uh, we have Dhamma close to us. Um, it's only the, I think the question is about how much support we have from from people around. I think the Buddha himself answers, answers this question by saying, you are your own creator. You are your own guide. Attahi uh, attano nato, kohi nato parosia, you know, can we, where can we look for another refuge when you are your own refuge? I think when we think in those terms, um, I think we feel inspired and we look within. But again, um, it would be nice to have a Buddha around, it would be nice to have uh, 
kind of conditions like in the Buddha's days. But they had their own set of problems at that time, and we have our own set of problems in the present day. So with that understanding, um, I think we can approach the practice and be firm on our practice. And Dhamma has this nature of giving us the results uh, almost immediately, Sandittika. Mm -hmm. And that way you can see it is working and that experience itself will be your guide. I think we can start the discussion from there and see uh, what other ideas our Bhantes, venerable monks and nuns have. Thank you for that. Yeah, uh, thank you Bhante Kusala uh, for um, um, sharing these uh, encouraging words uh, with us. And uh, of course, we uh, would always think Buddha lived in the 6th century BCE, that means 2,600 years ago. And by then, we know that it wasn't a globalized uh, uh, world. We did not, we, did not, uh, we don't uh, find any reference to global village in the textbook. It was a very close-knitted community they had. And by then, maybe they, uh, there were no complications but we are living in the 21st century, uh, a technocentric world. And uh, now uh, we have a global village. We, can, we meet all kinds of people, all kinds of things. And uh, with the technology, there are more complications. Uh, at the same time, it, it made possible for us to meet like this. Uh, so uh, do we think uh, uh, we have more challenges now, more complications now, more uh, or are we facing any uh, 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 challenges uh, uh, as opposed to the teachings of the Buddha? Or are we uh, having any hard time? These are some questions that I, I think uh, I have received from some friends uh, previously. So um, uh, Bhante Santasobana uh, from Los Angeles. Uh, what do you think? Uh, please share your experiences. Thank you very much, uh, all the venerable sirs. And uh, <clears throat> especially, actually, it, this is a very interesting topic, and I really appreciate our venerable Saranapala uh, choose this topic. Yeah. Because uh, most of the time when I go to schools, the children always ask this question. <laughs> and when it comes to that, I think... Uh, we are in the, the best timeline uh, when it comes to spiritual development. Uh, because the very reason we are here in this time, you know, so then we have to get the best out of our life. Uh -huh. uh, when it comes to enlightenment and the Buddha's teaching, it is not the world that uh, happening outside us. It's mostly that the world means that our head to toes, our this body, and understanding regarding the five aggregates is the understanding the world, not the outside or depending on the outside opinion. So when it comes to that, uh, especially uh, nowadays we have so much information, but when it comes to our human life, the, the according to neuroscience that uh, our body also naturally keep growing. As example, before 2000 years, that our brain was totally different. And on, through this human civilizations, we already changed our brain also. And as you know, after uh, this uh, 2000 uh, years, that uh, now this new generation have new kind of way of thinking and understanding, kind of like a millennials. So mm. like that, when it come to us, the, the growth that happened in our brain has so much resources tuned to the nature. Mm. And uh, so that is one of the important thing. And other thing is uh, when it comes to our inner development, the one of the major important thing that we have to look more than any other things, we, we depend on our uh, mirror neurons. So that means what other human does is more important for us. Mm. So when it comes to that, we have so much past experience from our enlightened masters and the monks and the community of the Sangha. And so we, it is available today. 
more than any other time we have so much information available for us so i think this is the this is one of the best time period we go through the the very reason i think because after this 2020 the human brain start to start to shift to different level from awareness to depend on machines and technology so now we are in a kind of like a timeline because after another 10 years, 20 years, like these children, the way they grow more than the awareness and recognition themselves, they're more depending from uh, machines. So as example, today we have this conversation, but by the time in the future, maybe within another 10 years, people are going to have conversation with their own machines. It's, it, it's now happening like Siri. Sometimes most of people have a conversation with the Siri, you know? <laughs> but still we are, we are capable to have this human connection. Yeah. So that is one of the key point when it comes to understanding and regarding enlightenment. So I think this is one of the major important timeline that we keep passing. So only thing is we have to question, are we ready to get that opportunity? Now, that let me ask key. you a question. Let me ask you a question. Uh, yes. Sobana. Now, of course, I know you're, you're also a very active monk in California, Los Angeles. I see a lot of uh, activities. Now, do you, uh, have you personally uh, faced any challenge uh, that was uh, kind of against your principle? Or, or how, did you, how did you face it? How did you overcome it? No, actually that uh, this, this is what, uh, I think in California so far in my life experience in these 12 years, yeah. uh, I had the best opportunities here. Okay. You know? <laughs> and what, because this is, the, this is the way I always look. And when the challenge come for us, that is the moment that we have, we, we have to pace for that and see what we know or what we practice going to work or not. Because if there is no, no challenge or if there is no resistance, come against our practice even within ourselves and within the society mm. it's it not going to become a kind of like a practice mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know there is nothing to do then when we open the refrigerator every, everything is there when we put our hand on pocket if the money is there when you turn on the uh, car if the you know everything works perfect if you go to the the road uh, that all the green lights there are no traffic then you will not going to experience what is life <laughs> Mm. No, yeah. so so whatever the challenge come, and brush up through that challenge is the important. So when it come to that, and according to this, one of the important thing in this enlightened path is contentment. Mm -hmm. So aligning contentment towards the enlightenment is the key point. So that is what mostly I teach for the children. Mm. So aligning content contentment means that who we are so far in this journey is not happened by mistake. Mm -hmm. This all happened through a reason and today who I am is a journey towards the enlightenment, not I am disconnected from my future. Mm -hmm. so, so that way I am aligning and I am slowly adjusting myself and keeping the path. So then as we all know, the enlightenment means doesn't mean it's going to happen overnight. It is a process. Mm -hmm. So are we satisfied already so far in this journey? Then, mm -hmm. then in the future, it's going to happen. And mm -hmm. as we all know, regarding the, the venerable uh, Vakkali, and mm -hmm. he was in front of the Buddha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every day he was like to see the Buddha in person. Uh -huh. But what the Buddha's advice was, Vakkali, you know, this is useless. Yeah. You know, just go and practice yourself. <laughs> so then when it comes to life, we have to question ourselves, are we ready? Uh -huh. If we are ready, then it's it, it, it going to be a great blessing for us. And uh, there is a story, I think that uh, uh, this Temiya uh, Jataka, the Temiya, long, long time ago, there was a king and he had a son, this, his name called Temiya. So he was very young, you know, active well educated young boy and uh, one day he came to his father and told uh, that i don't like this lifestyle i i want to go to jungle mm. I, 
you know, I, I want to like practice kind of like ascetic uh, lifestyle. So the father thought, you know, he's, he's crazy, you know, because uh, he's going to be the king. Now he's going to give up this everything and try to go escape from this. And he told, you know, you can't go like this. You have responsibilities to take care of this kingdom. Mm -hmm. But uh, by the time he told, no, no, I don't like, give me sometimes I want to go and, you know, maybe I'll come back. So then the father thought, so he's young, you know, this, uh, this he's uh, kind of like uh, not listening to me. He told, okay, get your lesson and told, okay, if you like, you can leave the palace. <laughs> and this young boy left the palace and went to the jungle and the father was waiting one day, two days. After one week, he thought, oh, he will come back. But he didn't. After one year, he didn't come back. And then all other ministers and the people and everybody asked, where are the, where are the prince? Because he is going to be the next king. Mm. And then the king told, oh, he left the palace. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know where he is. He didn't come back. And then by the time everybody gathered and everybody start to look this young boy in the middle of the jungle because they need him as the king. And so then finally the king found out this young boy in the middle of the jungle without any kind of like a comfort, without any shelter, without any kind of proper food. And after one year, he found out this young boy, his, his son, and was so healthy and comfortable and was and he's, he's looked so happy. And the father asked, how, how you, how you be, used to live like this? How you survived? Because I thought maybe wild animal or the very dangerous people live in the jungle. Maybe I thought you already dead. Mm. Then he told, oh, this is my principle. I didn't dwell in past. I was not dreaming regarding my future. I used to live in the present moment, focusing to whatever in front of me. So that's why I'm like this. Okay. So, so that life principle, I think, wherever we are, if we're capable to that uh, aligning our moment, that means developing contentment towards that where we're heading. And I think out of any situation in any moment, you get you can get the best because. Why we missing the best most of time disturbed mind that disturbed mind come out of unsatisfaction. So if you develop a kind of like a satisfaction wherever you are with, with any situation, I think this is a timeline that we can get the best because when it go towards the enlightenment, especially when we practice the meditation, one of the key, key elements that we have to have the restful life and the, com the, the physical mental comfort. Amazing. More than any other time, we, we have, we, we, it's available for us. But sometimes we have nature to not to listen to that. So it is nothing to do with the timeline. It is, that is what we, we need practice. You know? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Shanta Sobara. You actually shed a lot of lights uh, regarding today's topic, and uh, even telling that uh, story. And I, I think uh, this is uh, making uh, a very interesting discussion for us now. Uh, so now uh, I would like to go to uh, uh, Venerable Ananda who raised his hand. He would like to contribute something to this discussion. And Venerable Ananda, I know you uh, became a monk uh, at the uh, 30s. And uh, do you think, um, is it harder to live a Buddhist life now than in the time of the Buddhas? What's your experience? Thank you, Venerables, for inviting me here and uh, dear Kalyana Mitras. So I think it's a very uh, useful and an interesting topic today. Like uh, Bhante Kusala mentioned, uh, Buddhist, Buddhism itself is not time bound. Uh, but having said that, we have also learned in scriptures that there are Shunya Kalpas where no Buddha is born. And we are in a fortunate culture where the message, messengers are there, message is alive. So it's a nice thing to have. It would have been even nicer to have Buddha right uh, by our sides, even uh, in our Zoom forum. That would have been really nice. But unfortunately, we don't have that. But like uh, Venerable Shantasobhan mentioned, we are living in a very interesting uh, timeline of the history of time. So to 
looking look into that uh, in a little bit of fun uh, in an anthropological way or a socialistic way that uh, we find we find few regions of uh, human civilization where they have a uh, the early hunter gatherers living in an early communist uh, society where they bartered uh, everything was self sustainable then they moved into a stage where the feudalism was present largely uh, the buddhist uh, era and uh, the post buddhist era where the feudalism structure was available and then we have moved to a new world since the 1500s that uh, where uh, it's it's been uh, more capitalistic based and the society has been by and large very liberal and uh, Uh, I, I would say more civilized compared to the world back in the day. Now the world civilized again. If you take the word civilization, and mm-hmm. uh, this particular word civic, civic means living in towns. Civic means towns. So when people started moving from jungle to small nucleus uh, villages and then to town, mm-hmm. they have uh, had been certain changes. And I think a very important change is that people has uh, established. People have established these things. Uh, these things called the virtues. because in the jungle uh, the 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 most powerful one the rule of the jungle is the most powerful one uh, is the winner and he can uh, uh, rip off from anyone who's uh, not so powerful but then we, when we got into civilizations this thing called the virtues developed so i think uh, more and more we see, get civilized it's easier for someone to stick to the virtues for example uh, mm. i have practiced being a vegetarian uh, for some time back in the day i found it very easy because i have the options and i was living in the middle east uh, region for some time and even uh, where there are no crops because of the modern technology i had vegetarian options but imagine back in the day 2000 years ago 1500 years ago uh, if i'm in middle east for me to become a vegetarian would have been really hard so in that sense for a person to stick to his virtues i think this is a fantastic time on the other hand uh, on the other hand i think uh, it's a very interesting time because uh bante shanti sogan also mentioned the information availability now from uk to sri lanka to china all the way up to north america we are in one single forum thanks to zoom and internet and voice over internet however this also gives us this information overflow where there's a lot of unwanted junk on youtube uh, regarding any concept meditation mindfulness uh, buddhism whatever you uh, go through there's there's a lot of good as well as there's a lot of uh, bad uh, now why i say bad is not necessarily they are, they are bad by content itself but it's not a live discussion it's like a one way streamed uh, record which is on a server and uh, we go and uh, start referring that without understanding the context now in that sense it could be really bad it could be very misleading so in that sense uh, there's a negativity but uh, the most interesting thing i see is that uh, compared to the olden eras where the hunter gatherers or the feudalistic societies were in this era i i find it most interesting like uh, bante shanta mentioned that we are very satisfied with our basic needs mm-hmm. if we refer to maslow's pyramid of hierarchy of food security housing they are they are actually in a very much better shape than what it used to be back in the day now we know sri lanka facing a economic crisis we are sort of going back in time where certain uh, things are not met but uh, you know in a normal living condition in this 21st century our basic uh, needs are more or less satisfied our security needs food needs uh, like uh, like uh, bande said back in the day 100 years ago people didn't have food stocked and uh, piled in their homes they have mm-hmm. to go out and uh, get them but now we open the fridge there's a lot of calories inside the fridge inside the refrigerator so in that sense it's very interesting which leads to the next uh, uh, next stage of uh, maslow's hierarchy which is the self actualization so more and more your basic needs are satisfied people have availability to think of more philosophical questions what's my purpose of existence what's uh, the whole life about i, I see the same thing uh, when i uh, initially became uh, got ordained i first stayed in buttala in a mm-hmm. cave temple where it was a very remote cave temple and when i spoke to people there me coming from uh, mostly cities kandy and colombo uh, mm. i figured that uh, in surya baba the life is all about uh, survival uh, mm. elephants are roaming and uh, you know after 4 4 pm you are you are not supposed to go out uh, uh, on the roads because there are wild elephants roaming and you could get struck uh, even the temple that uh, i got ordained there uh, the elephants have struck that temple recently taking out all the um, Uh, all the crops and uh, everything so people there they do not have time to think of this uh, more important questions in life i say more important in the sense of self actualization so their lives are about 
survival. But now we have transformed into a place where we have enough time to spend on on thinking self-actualization uh, needs. So in that sense, it's good. And, and another thing is that in Buddhism, we talk a lot about uh, how mind is so elusive of, of certain things, how the mind is projecting a reality for ourselves. And very interestingly, we find uh, Elon Musk coming up with a neural link and then uh, augmented reality. If you take a phone and if you, uh, you know, take out your camera, even in this Zoom platform, I can uh, change my virtual background, add a different <laughs> face, so uh, that whole illusion is much more prominent compared to back in the day. Now, back in the day in Buddha's time, there are certain examples that Buddha has taken. I can't remember the exact sutra, but uh, Buddha says of a, uh, of a painting, uh, that painting, uh, what he says there is that uh, uh, our mind is even more beautiful and complex and deceiving even mm. compared to this painting. I can't remember the exact name of that uh, painting. I think it's a painting. It's probably, uh, it's a holographic equivalent of uh, back in Buddha's time. So in that sense, to understand the elusive nature of mind, I think it's fantastic. However, there comes a negative side. You can also get absorbed and get stuck in virtual reality. Like mm -hmm. uh, take uh, social media. I have uh, watched this fantastic uh, um, sort of a, scientific fiction on black mirror where people get stuck in a social media or on a social media uh, driven uh, um, culture and everything is based on how people judge you on social media so mm -hmm. in that sense we can get uh, entangled with that and uh, lose our perspective so i think uh, coming back to our topic uh, is it hard i think uh, every time period has its own pros and cons but i'm very happy that i'm in this time frame because uh, I think it's an easy time frame compared to, you know, getting killed in your 30s or 40s. I mean, living for 30, 40 years old back in the day would have been a challenge. But now people live for 70s, 80s. So I think it's a very interesting time. And uh, uh, like I said in the beginning, like Bhante Kusal said, having Buddha here in this forum would be fantastic. But yeah. uh, I'm still happy because uh, what he preached, the Dharma, is time, not time bound. Thank you. Thank you, Venerable Ananda, for sharing your encouraging words and, uh, and insights. Uh, and I think, uh, as you may remember, uh, Sigmund Freud also authored a book. The name of the uh, book is called uh, Civilization and Discontentment. Uh, discontent. Uh, so as people became civilized, uh, people also became very discontented, very unhappy. Uh, so there are a lot of challenges. I think uh, we are not going into that direction yet. So uh, we are talking about whether life is more difficult than the time of the Buddha. So, Venerable Anurudha from Cambridge, uh, Canada. So, uh, what's your uh, take on this? Thank you, Venerable Sir, uh, inviting us uh, for this discussion. Actually, it's a really uh, interesting topic, uh, uh, this uh, question. Yeah. For the direct answer for the question, uh, it's yes. Actually, it's harder for uh, us to practice the Buddhist lifestyle uh, in this era, uh, than the uh, Lord Buddha's uh, actual, I mean, the, uh, when uh, the Lord Buddha was there, uh, lived in uh, life. So it's hard, actually, the uh, direct answer is yes. But uh, then the other side, as all the venerable uh, says, uh, highlighted, like uh, uh, Bhante Santa Shobana and Bhante Kosal and Bhante Arand also, yeah. we are living in this era. So we have to look at the way of practicing uh, the real uh, Buddhist lifestyle in this yeah. era because we, uh, we have no other option to do anything. So we, we can't go back to the past and we can't go, go to the future. Mm -hmm. So that is actually Lord Buddha's message. This uh, the main and uh, the core uh, teaching was. Uh, mm -hmm. So because of that, uh, we have to look at the ways of uh, practicing this uh, Lord Buddha's lifestyle in this era. Mm -hmm. So uh, I see few challenges in this era, mainly uh, because of the lifestyle of uh, the uh, present uh, uh, society, as mm -hmm. all the other uh, venerable cells highlighted, the information era, which began uh, early 90s, and then uh, it was popular early uh, 2000s. And now uh, it has uh, come to the era where it was the, the uh, I mean, the most uh, developed era where we lived. Uh, so in this era, right now, like uh, what's happening in this uh, whole world is people sharing their experiences so much with the, so much of information. 
So mm-hmm. other people uh, mostly get in that uh, experiences as information and they are thinking that that's their experience. Mm-hmm. So I think that is the uh, one of the uh, main uh, the one of the main challenges in this uh, era when we are uh, going to practice uh, this Buddhist lifestyle because uh, the Buddhist lifestyle always go with the experiential learning that is what Lord Buddha highlighted that is that is the one and only way of understanding the uh, uh, Lord Buddha's Dhamma and understanding ourselves by understanding ourselves and attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana enlightenment. So to do that, we have to be aware about ourselves. We have to be aware about our experiences. And through that experiential learning, only we can uh, actually uh, attain supreme bliss of Nibbana. The attaining supreme bliss of Nibbana means getting rid of the, all the kind of psychological suffering, nothing else. So mm-hmm. getting rid of all the psychological suffering, uh, we have to be aware about ourselves and we have to be uh, aware about the experiences that we are having in this every single moment. Mm-hmm. And we, uh, being with that experiences and by uh, having that awareness, we can understand the way of uh, the suffering happenings within ourselves. That mm-hmm. is the one and only way of getting rid of the suffering Mm-hmm. But, but because of their experiential sharing and people are thinking that the knowledge uh, is an experience. Mm-hmm. So, but the knowledge and understanding is clearly two different things, uh, as I see. Mm-hmm. So that is what Lord Buddha highlighted. The experiential learning is the one and only way to mm-hmm. understand the suffering. Because when it is happening, we can see it within ourselves, how it is happening. So as a fact, all of us uh, know that the attachment or the tanha is the mm-hmm. cause of suffering, but we know it as a knowledge. We have we have to understand that. To understand that, we have to see the happening of suffering within ourselves because of the attachment. When you are being aware about yourself, you can sense how the this attachment, uh, the 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 uh, I mean uh, the the attachment when the attachment changes, how the suffering changes within ourselves. Mm-hmm. With that understanding only, we can get rid of the attachment because we can't get rid of the attachments by force. Mm-hmm. So uh, because of that, I think it's a little bit harder to uh, practice Lord Buddha's Dhamma in this era. Mm-hmm. But as Buddhist monk, what our responsibility is to make other people practice this uh, uh, lifestyle in this era, because actually in the Lord Buddha's era, this experiential learning was the way of learning something. Lord Buddha even uh, uh, put a rule to uh, be, the, I mean, the uh, students to be with their teacher monk at least five years. Mm-hmm. Be with them at least five years, because that uh, living ex- experience will be the way of understanding. Because when you are living with that uh, teacher for five years, uh, with, if that teacher is understood the Dhamma, then you can get that understanding by living with him rather than transferring the knowledge only. Mm-hmm. And, uh, in this evolution, I, have see, I, have, I, I can see clearly that the uh, experiential, uh, I mean, transferring understanding was not happening sometime in back uh, days. Because of that, that uh, link has uh, broken because of that nowadays the knowledge is uh, sharing than the experience i mean understanding mm-hmm. because of that it's a little bit harder to practice uh, lord buddha's dhamma in this era but uh, if we go with our experiential learning we could understand the cause of suffering and within ourselves and get rid of the psychological suffering that we are having in in prevailing society than uh, ever in our uh, history I, I, for example, I think in US, it's uh, considered as more than 40% of population having the clinical uh, level uh, depression. So mm. uh, I think it's a, a crisis in US right now. So this era, it is very harder to practice. And actually it is uh, in this era, our uh, duty is much more uh, bigger than in other in all the eras in our history, because nowadays what, what people are think? suffering with uh, psychological uh, issues. Venerable Anurudha, why do you think yeah. it's so harder to practice Dhamma now? 
no, I mean, because most of people go in with the knowledge rather than uh, going with the experiences, because yeah. in Lord Buddha's practice, even we need to understand it by, by ourselves, because no one else can't uh, understand it yourself uh, by, uh, by themselves, because you have to understand it by yourself. So mm -hmm. because of that, you have to be aware about yourself and uh, understand. That is why I, I that uh, knowledge the right in this era people think knowledge is understanding. Mm -hmm. So that is why it is very harder to uh, go in this path. Okay, interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Venerable Anuruddha, for sharing your honest experience and and thoughts with us. Uh, I, I think. Uh, 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 our friends who are watching us on YouTube and Facebook Live, uh, they are really enjoying this uh, discussion today, special today's topic. And uh, I would like to uh, 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 give a kindful reminder to all our friends. Uh, uh, if you have any particular questions, please uh, make a comment. I might uh, take your question and ask from the venerable monks and nuns. Uh, so please feel free to uh, write your question on Zoom or uh, YouTube or, or Facebook. So uh, now we have uh, Venerable uh, Samit Ratana, uh, who is from uh, Oxford, uh, England. It's midnight for you, Venerable Samit Ratana. And uh, I know you have something very interesting to share with us. Uh, let me ask you just a, a, a question. Have you ever experienced any difficulty? Uh, that made uh, uh, you very hard to practice Dhamma? Uh, yes, Bhante, of course, I think I, I have to say about that as well a little bit in my among the, these facts, I think. <laughs> so, uh, yes, so thank you very much. And there uh, was most venerable Mahasangha. So I'm truly pleased to talk about this very wonderful and philosophical topic. So uh, I think, um, yes, I, I, I was anticipating to talk about three aspects in this topic, which is the, what is the, well, what is the Buddhist life really? And the, I can understand the uh, varieties of human problems in society. Mm -hmm. And the, what is the concept of time with regards to my some observations and some research, some research as well. However, in my point of view, I think the, the Buddhist life is towards the understanding of reality. So uh -huh. it is, I think it depends on the conventional truth and the absolute truth. So mm -hmm. if I talk about the conventional truth, I think it derives from some theories, some systems and some contents. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it is really clear that. Uh, I think in addition, when I when I talk about the absolute truth, it comes from the purity and human wisdom and the uh, and the the final and the ultimate nature of the truth. I, th I think this is the difference. So I think there is no time matter. Then if you want to practice the Dhamma, if you want to understand the real nature of the world, I think every time and each experience gives us the real opportunity to that. We cannot get rid of that anyway. Uh, if I say the Sir uh, Albert Einstein, who was the great scientist in the 20th century in the world, he said, life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. So, uh, so I think as a Buddhist follower, or not just as a Buddhist follower, as a human being, we also have to get the correct moment in terms of Dhamma. Then how to get the correct moment in the words of conventional truth and the absolute truth, then we have to practice it. Otherwise, it is useless or meaningless, I think. Then Dhamma is there is no time matter. Uh, if I say the concept of time in the Buddhism, the Sambahula Sutta in Sanyukta Nikaya, Akaliko, mm -hmm. Sanditiko, it is timeless and it is unconditioned by time and season. It, yes, I think it is of course that because it's about human understanding. So mm -hmm. uh, understanding about, about the world and about the human interior life and exterior life as well. Uh, I would like to add another scientist who was known as the David Bohm. Uh -huh. I think he was the, yes, David Bohm, he was a Nobel laureate for physics in the 20th century and he was the chief professor in physics at the University of London. He said, 
the very difficult task is the maintaining human mentality and the understanding, understanding and uh, responding to human problems that derive from human mind and consciousness. Mm -hmm. But the maintaining and understanding exterior materials and physical phenomena are really, really easier other than mm -hmm. that. I, I, I think this is the matter of that. So uh, yes, in spite of that, I wanted to say at the current time, we have a variety of problems mm -hmm. in, terms of, so in, in terms of social issues, economic issues, and mm -hmm. political and religious issues. I think it is very clear at this time because mm -hmm. uh, at some time we are having, we are having a variety of news like global warming, global economic crisis, and uh, climate change, and some vulnerable and traumatic diseases all around the world. So however, I think this is the nature. What the Buddha's advice, instead of that, we have to go through that, and we have to get the wisdom and the lots of insights from that. Uh, yes, I am. I would really be pleased to add another citation from that. Yeah, mm. I think it is also presented by Sir Albert Einstein. Mm. Uh, this is a very funny and enjoyable, I think. So, uh, so uh, I, uh, Albert Einstein has said, if I had an hour to solve a problem, I would spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem, five minutes mm. thinking about the solutions. I think the greatest thing is to envisage and think of the problems and the current situations and the backgrounds and the environment around us. I think it helps and accommodates us to achieve this self-actualization, which is the real Buddhist life. So mm -hmm. uh, apart from all these facts in my life, if I say, when I'm studying at the, at, at here, the, at Oxford here, uh, I think I am having a very, very different and controversial experiences because I, 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 am really, I am really strange student here. So as a Buddhist cultural student, I have to confront of lots of difficulties as a very young and some Asian ethnic and background student. So, mm -hmm. so, so however, I, I think it is manageable and it is all right for me because as a student and as a Buddhist philosopher, I am trying to manage it in terms of Buddhism. Then, uh, so all these very worst and some cruel and some non-humanistic messages and incidences, I, uh, I try to use to improve my compassion mm. and my loving kindness and mm -hmm. my empathetic joy and my, and my tolerance as well. So problems are really not the problem. So crisis is not crisis is not really a crisis. I think crisis and problem, all these negative things are really a positive message or blessed message to go ahead and the, attain the supreme message of the Buddhist life. I think that's all I wanted to say. Thank yeah. you very much. Th thank you. Thank you, Vener uh, uh, Venerable Samita Ratana for uh, bringing more insights uh, or sharing more insights uh, regarding today's topic. And in fact, uh, one uh, a friend in uh, uh, who is watching uh, YouTube uh, asked, I, I, I know you used the word uh, Akalika, and he, uh, he says, thank you, Bante. It's a question from AS. Uh, thank you, Bante. Can you please speak about Akalika in reference to your topic question? I think we will uh, uh, discuss this. And, and Venerable Samitaratana, do you have any Thoughts on that, the word akaliko, uh, referring to the... Uh... Yes, but indeed, I think akaliko directly means uh, there is no time matter, there is no need to worry about time. Every yeah. moment, it, every moment, every opportunity has to experience Dhamma. So there is no particular or specific time to perceive the absolute truth. But yeah. in terms of some, some cultural or some social matters, we have some particular time, but uh -huh. instead of absolute or the ultimate truth, we have no time. We have no any, uh, we have no any allocation for that kind of purpose. So every moment, each time you have to practice it, you have to go ahead and you have to pursue the Dhamma by yourself. 
I think it's a general idea. Interesting. Very, uh, thank you so much. And now uh, let's uh, uh, go uh, next to uh, Venerable Trudeau from uh, Florida, USA. I know uh, Venerable Trudeau, you were in a pride parade uh, yesterday or the day before you were enjoying. So anyways, that doesn't really matter. Uh, so uh, what's your take on today's uh, uh, topic? Uh, please feel free to share with us. Is it harder to practice Dhamma now than the time of the Buddha? Salutations to all of the venerables and nuns that are present today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, and 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 yes, I sent you a picture of me attending Pride with my mom. Actually, uh, again, part this is part of my Buddhism Without Borders program. Uh, whereas, <laughs> as a representative of the human race and as a representative of the monastic order, I go out there and uh, show my support. And this goes in conjunction with today's topic. Uh, is it difficult to practice the Dhamma? From my yeah. standpoint, uh, you know, I, I think it's actually the total opposite. The, well, let's talk about what makes it difficult first and how the easiness uh, outweighs the cons, the pros outweighing the cons. Mm. And let's talk about the cons. The cons is that if you're in America, uh, well, actually, both East and West, we live in a very opinionated society, whereas not a lot of people practices right speech. As a direct result of that, not practicing right speech, people are easily influenced by what it is that's being said. Mm. Therefore, it draws you away from the Dhamma. It draws you away from the truth. It draws you away from the true nature of reality of what that subject is, right? And, uh, and it also, as it draws you away, it draws you towards the secular world, which is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have heard this uttered many, many times by Venerable Jayasaro. We have even heard it uh, uttered by other members uh, of other religions, such as the Christianity, the Catholic religion, uh, Cardinal and Archbishop uh, world, Donald world, where of which they're raising flags in regards to the secular world. So now we reel it back in and everyone who is watching, this is where we, we get reeled back in with members of the monastic that reminds us every time when you listen to a Dhamma talk, it reminds you. Because as humans, we simply forget. Matter of fact, I, I would say our primary task is to forget as humans. <laughs> and it is no wonder that when you go to church, when you go to monasteries, why do we have to repeat ourselves over and over again? Mm. You know, every, every time when we end the conversation here, we cite the, the vinya. Mm -hmm. All right. And every time when we come in, you know, we pay homage to the Buddha, to the triple gem. Mm -hmm. And over and over again, we remind ourselves to keep the precepts because we humans simply forget. Venerable uh, Sanata, uh, Sanata Vihari does a lot of research uh, in psychology. As a matter of fact, I believe him and I are very, very on the fast track on about conducting research, cross-sectional, long longitudinal, experimental, especially me with experimental research in psychology in measuring uh, our younger students about how much they forget when we teach them. Yeah. And so, so that, that is what's going on with the, the con side of practicing the Dhamma. Mm. The pros is that it is the best time right now than ever before in that you have access to the Dhamma, access to insight.org, you know, buddhanet.net. You have instant information at your fingertips. You also have direct, unprecedented access to any venerables here that you see. Myself and other venerable like uh, Sister Kanti Kemma. You know, these venerables and monks make themselves available to the public, mm -hmm. whereas you can ask and clarify any clarifications, any ambivalence, ambiguity in regards to the teachings. Mm -hmm. Most of my students are like, well, 
matter of fact, at the the one the one student that I met at at Pride, and we took a video together on my TikTok, uh-huh. and he was holding a drink when he he met me. He he was like, "Oh my goodness, I, I now get to see you. You're on TikTok," and uh, he was holding a drink and he was trying to hide the drink, and he <laughs> says, it, 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 "It isn't it from a Buddhist standpoint that um that we can't we can't drink." I said, no, 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 no. You can drink. Go ahead. Ha- have a drink. Drink it right now. And I clarify in the refraining of intoxicating substance is that, you know, the Buddha, the Buddha wants you to have a good time. Simply put, the Buddha is only concerned. We Buddhists are only concerned when you do too much of it and it gets to the extreme point where you drink so much that you have no idea what planet you're actually really on. And you're doing things that you can't even remember the next day. That is pretty extreme. But in regards to the precepts, yes, you know, what, what is your middle way? What is your middle way? And so everyone has a different definition of middle way and uh, definition of happiness. Sorry. Um, and so... Again, the clarifications. Now, when 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 we when we studied, well, when I studied, you know, I went deep into a Jancha's teachings. I went deep into other venerables that are not alive anymore. So, therefore, you know, the, the times that when I study Dhamma, I've been studying Dhamma for twenty years, and you know, I don't get these um, the opportunity that everyone else has in regarding to asking a living venerable. Uh, and so when I listened to a Jan Cha, again, it was more technological, you know, put ear earplugs in and just take all of his teachings in as much as I possibly can, trying to disseminate, trying to interpret and trying to pretend like he's sitting here right next to me. So again, when we fully dedicate ourselves with patience and diligence in the practice of the Dhamma, I guess this is the best time in the world to do so, to find yourself a good qualifying authentic teacher, to find a Kalyanamita that will stand with you, next to you during this path, to solidify a commitment that I want to be Buddhist, I'm going to practice the Buddhist way because I believe in the teacher, I believe in the process that it will in fact lead me to the path of true inner peace, true inner freedom, true inner liberation, as it has for us here, as it has for myself. And we teachers hope to inspire for you and the rest of the world by and through our own practice. Uh, and, And with that inspiration, again, it reinforces the process, the methods that the Buddha left us um, to, to stay straight on the path. And, you know, I try to keep it fun and hopefully everyone here also try to keep it easy, concise to the point uh, and less confusing when it comes to the Dhamma. There is so much joy in practicing the Dhamma and so much joy in practicing meditation. And there is everyday growing research uh, with the latest book that I have seen with Dr. Siegel, S-I-E-G-E-L, M. I think he's PhD. I don't think he's MD. Mm -hmm. Uh, at Barnes and Noble, where he is presenting, again, up-to-date research on the benefits of meditation. Mm-hmm. And again, this is to cast away your doubts, one of the five hindrances, when you actually enter uh, meditation. So I, I hope that this was a compelling case for me to make for everyone, and that we should focus on what is working right for us in mm-hmm. now in times of change, in times of difficulties in the world. But Mm -hmm. after you have received teachings so deeply, so profoundly, and so clearly, all of these things roll right off your skin. Mm. You are not to be moved by anything that is good or bad, said the Buddha. You are to train yourself so that you are unmoved by the most recent issue, Roe versus Wade, abortions, and everything else that the venerables Mm -hmm. above have previously mentioned. So I'd like to yield the floor back to other venerables, but thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Venerable Trudeau, for sharing your honest uh, experience. And I know uh, as young monks and nuns, we are, uh, we are uh, actually hanging around with a lot of people, people from all walks of life, 
uh, people who are coming to see us with all kinds of issues, personal issues, social issues, global issues. And uh, so uh, it's Dhamma, Dhamma taught by the Buddha, it, uh, it, of course, it's Akalika, it's, uh, it has no time, it's a timeless Dhamma, it can be practiced, the solution uh, given by the Buddha is timeless, it can be practiced uh, by anyone uh, beyond, as we say, beyond the borders, you know. So uh, thank you so much, Venerable Trudeau, for bringing even awareness of Dhamma to the people uh, during that Pride Parade. <laughs> All right, so now let's uh, uh, go to Bante Sankicha uh, from Detroit, Michigan, USA. And before that, I see Bante Pemaratani is also here from Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania, USA. Thank you for coming. Uh, I will ask you a question later. Uh, Bante Sankicha, what do you think? Is it uh, harder to practice Dhamma uh, now than the time of the Buddha? Thank you very much, Bhante. Uh, my respect and uh, honor to all the Venerable Bhantes yeah. and our Dhamma friends online. Um, it's a pleasure to uh, share these thoughts uh, regarding this special uh, topic today. Mm. Let me uh, talk about the universal aspect of the Dhamma uh, as the main focus today. Uh, we all came to know actually from the, uh, the ideas, thoughts of our Venerable Bhantes, uh, the universal aspects of the Dhamma, that the mm. theories, uh, the laws of nature, the life, and the world uh, that Buddha spoke about, they are not changed in time. And uh, another aspect of that is uh, also we need to think about that uh, the problems that we are facing today is not really different from uh, the time of the Buddha, right? If you mm. think about the basic questions that Buddha had, during his uh, uh, the quest in search of the truth, you know, the birth, old age, getting sick and eventually dying. So these are the basic problems even today. So this is one of the aspects of the universality of the teachings, you know. The other problems, all the issues are, uh, can be uh, the superficial uh, difference, uh, you know. Uh, in that way, I don't see actually the problems that we are facing today, the problems that people experience those days are different, you know, but the manifestations of these problems, issues, suffering can be different, you know, and uh, we can see that uh, as the result of this evolutionary process, as we, we go through a lot of changes in, the, in this time, you know, uh, there are so many different uh, distractions, problems, negativities out there, you know, the social medias and all these things, uh, but if you think about the what mostly matters, you know, is it the external conditions or what is going on in the uh, world out there, or is it something inside, right mm. inside of me? So mm. This is a very important clarification that we have to make, especially when we try to apply the dharma into our everyday life. You know, no matter what is out there uh, that are distracting us, but the most important thing is that when we are vulnerable to these negativities, conditions, if we are ready to change, actually, because of these outside conditions, we cannot stop suffering or any other negativities coming on our way. So therefore, it's very important to know, actually, when we learn the Dhamma, uh, when we uh, learn about the practice, whenever we want to get the best out of the practice, uh, especially in this time, according to my opinion, actually, it is, a matter of being smart. Mm. You know, if, we, if we know how to use the Dhamma, if, exactly. you, if you know what exactly you need to know from the Dhamma, even, not the whole typical maybe, right? It is impossible to uh, uh, learn and memorize all the teachings, but at least if you can understand uh, your issues, your problems, you know, whatever uh, you are having difficulty with, and then look for it in the Dhamma and uh, search for it. And if you know how to uh, skillfully apply these techniques, you know, methods into your experience, your life experience, you can find uh, solutions there. So time doesn't matter in that way. So in that case, I uh, really appreciate these teachings of the Buddha uh, in one particular discourse, Buddha mentions that, uh, you know, 
forests. There are some people, some practitioners who are living in the forest, in the jungles, they are maintaining a life of a town or city. But there are certain practitioners, some practitioners who are living in the cities, but they are maintaining a lifestyle just like they are living in a forest. <laughs> you know, so we can see that it's a matter of how we understand it, how we uh, assimilate these teachings, you know. It's being so smart, I think. You know, if we know how to use it, it is the magical word today, you know, the present moment, right? <laughs> the present <laughs> moment. Everything is to be experienced, practiced within this moment. So if we can simply correct ourselves within this present moment, uh, identifying our true values, you know, what are the most important things for my life. So that way we can learn how to reorient our life. We can uh, come in line with all the aspects, incorporating with the teachings and everything. So uh, my message is that, you know, for all the uh, people who are having these issues uh, with the present day to, uh, today, having difficulties with the teachings so or the practice, it is being so smart, being wise, how to understand our needs and how to apply the, the necessary teachings into our everyday life. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bhante Sankicha. As uh, one phrase that I would like to highlight, be smart in practicing Dhamma. No matter which age you live in, it could, it could be the time of the, uh, during the time of the Buddha, even the 21st century. If we are not being smart, <laughs> we are going we are going to uh, create a lot of uh, sufferings for ourselves. Uh, so um, there is a question uh, from uh, one of our friends who are watching us on uh, YouTube. Uh, Anne Nittis uh, is asking a question. Thank you for your time and service given. Uh, here's a question. Many monks, etc., stay in monasteries. Is that due to the world being not conducive or too hard to learn in? Was Buddha secluded from life? Uh, I, I think uh, Bhante Sankicha uh, uh, touched on that question a bit. Uh, the why monks uh, live in the forest. Uh, so, yeah. I, so do you have any other yeah, thoughts? Right. Yeah, actually, I can uh, talk about it. Yeah. Uh, why would they introduce this monastic life, uh, sectoral life, for spiritual practices to be very convenient and and be fully dedicated to it. You know, that's the purpose of living a, a monastic life, you know. Uh, and we know uh, if you are living a normal, uh, ordinary life, there are so much distractions for you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you have to deal with a lot of problems, issues, obligations. So you have a limited time to dedicate to your, your practice. But it doesn't mean that uh, a lay person cannot practice the Dhamma, you know, even to the considerable level of realization, this uh, uh, enlightenment, Dhamma can be practiced by anyone. So again, going back, you know, defining our values, what you really want in your life, you know, mm -hmm. and learning how to incorporate the teachings wisely into your everyday life. So uh, these two levels, these are just two levels of the practice, depending on your needs, how much you need it. Okay. And it's open to anyone. Okay, wonderful. Uh, Venerable uh, Anurudh uh, from uh, Cambridge, <laughs> Canada. Yeah, uh, thank you, Anurudh, uh, sirs. I just wanted to uh, clarify uh, one thing that I uh, mentioned the other thing, and also the uh, I'm not uh, giving a different uh, argument or anything here. Yeah. Uh, but uh, one thing, but because I see this, uh, uh, I told that it is harder to. Uh, uh, practice the Lord Buddha's uh, the Dhamma in this era than the Lord Buddha's time. Because uh, when we take uh, the prevailing society, we can't see many arahans, arahans uh, like uh, it was in uh, Lord Buddha's era, in Lord, or Lord Buddha's time. There were uh, millions of arahans or thousands of arahans. There are so many uh, the stories uh, about those thousands and millions of arahans. But mm -hmm. in the present world, we can't see that much of arahant or enlightenment uh, people in the present world. So clearly, we can see it is a little, it's harder to practice in the present world because if the practice is there and if the people are practicing in uh, such a way, uh, we should uh, see the uh, enlightened people uh, as much as 
uh, they are in the Lord Buddha's time. So that is why I clearly see uh, the practicing of Dhamma in this era is a little bit harder for the people. Mm-hmm. But again, it, as uh, all the other uh, vendors has highlighted, Lord Buddha's Dhamma is not time bound. But if you are not, if you have not understand that the Lord Buddha's Dhamma, because you, to practice Lord Buddha's Dhamma, you need to have that basic understanding. If you don't have that basic understanding how to practice the mindfulness, if you are not in the path, it, it, then it is really hard for you to practice. That is why we can't see that much of num, uh, uh, enlightened monks or the enlightened people in the present world uh, compared to Lord Buddha's time. Uh, uh, having said that, actually we can, uh, I will, uh, ex- I will uh, give an, uh, a, a small clarification to the uh, uh, question that uh, Bhante Sarnapala asked earlier. So uh, if, we want, if we want to learn how to ride a bicycle, if you want to ride a bicycle, we can't just go and take a bicycle for the first time in our life. In, uh, and take the bicycle and ride it. We have, we, even though we can, we uh, learn uh, or read about uh, how to ride the bicycle, or uh, we watch the YouTube videos, we watch the many uh, movies about how to ride the bicycle. Even how much we learn about how to ride the bicycle, we will not be able to ride the bicycle until you go and you ride it by yourself and learn the art of balancing the bicycle through mm. that experiential learning. Yeah. So nowadays, people are learning about how to ride a bicycle without touching the bicycle or without taking the bicycle and learn the art of riding bicycle. Okay. They are learning about how to ride a bicycle with the information and everything they are teach, talking and uh, uh, reading and watching everything. And they just try to learn the how, bicycle, how to ride the bicycle with the knowledge, not taking the bicycle and uh, actually uh, riding it and learning it. That is why uh, I see the people are having the, this difficulty of practicing Lord Buddha's life because they are trying to learn the Lord, practicing of Lord Buddha's life rather than practicing it. Uh, that is the, uh, answer. That's the interesting point you made, yeah. Verman Anruddha, is like, um, I think as, as we know, there are three steps of Pariyati, Patipati, and Pativeda. At the moment, people are doing the Pariyati, they are learning, <laughs> but they are not doing the Patipati. Yes. The practice. So, yeah. um, so, so, and that's a very interesting point. So now, uh, let me just make it very simple uh, for everyone to understand. Let's say, let's take the five precepts for the lay people. Okay, uh, refraining from taking life, refraining from stealing, refraining from sexual misconduct, refraining from lying, refraining from consuming alcohol and drugs. So, do you think now? This is a question. Maybe uh, variable uh, Shanta Sobana. Okay. You raised your hand. So, do you think practicing the five precepts is uh, harder now than the time of the Buddha? <laughs> uh, you have to uh, unmute yeah. yourself. No, actually, I think this is the time period that we can practice five precepts uh, without any difficulties. The very reason that we have enough human experience to understand the killing and uh, all the, uh, the, the sexual misconducting and uh, taking all the unnecessary things, uh, intake that all the drugs and alcohol and that things, stealing, we have enough experience. And mm-hmm. I think more than any other time, we are capable to, to guard ourselves and protect ourselves mm-hmm. from that uh, unwholesome things. And uh, at the same time, I want to bring some other information uh, regarding that the two questions asked about the Akalika. Uh-huh. So the, when it comes to Akalika, that uh, the Dharma is not limited to particular time. Uh-huh. And other thing is the Dharma, not, not us, we are bound to time. But yeah. the Dharma is immediately effective. Uh-huh. So then if we are capable to get out of our egocentric, self-centered mind and surrender to the Dhamma with the faith, then we will immediately get the benefit. Mm. But So if we think, oh, we are, oh, we have so much time and we, we can anytime can get access to Dhamma. No, we, we don't have that because we are very, we, we belong to time. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So that that that's why that the Buddha's final verse word was 
you know don't don't be delay yeah. you know so as soon as possible try to get access to them but the dhamma is is it has no time uh, particular time uh, it it not belong to a time mm-hmm. so and other thing is that the monks are practicing in the in the forest and jungles and they have their very monastic way of deeper you know practice but uh, we have to understand when it come to the teachings of the buddha it is not that uh, blocking or closing our senses and going away from the life it doesn't matter who we were practicing mm-hmm. but that is not the purpose mm. you know guarding ourselves and understanding and developing our mindfulness is the very essence of the buddha's teaching mm-hmm. so when it come to your mindfulness you are capable to to understand how things come to be as they are you no need any kind of other knowledge or any kind of other help so that should be the main purpose and other thing is why we talk like this today because when it come to the world and mostly when i would work with the students what i learn they misunderstood what, uh, the, the buddhism them they mostly think it is kind of like a you know based with the discipline mm-hmm. so that is what they think and sometimes and there was an incident and uh, uh one student came and he was not uh, you know he had a very you know long face and grumpy face so i i asked why you like this no <laughs> my mother told don't 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 smile don't laugh with the monks <laughs> <laughs> you know so it's like that they think it's kind of, it's kind of like you know you have to behave so discipline in front of the monk and or kind of like that and uh, other thing that that one thing is that the people misunderstand what is buddhism they go with the pre, the, the precept or discipline record but we need come to that it is mindfulness mm-hmm. and the next one is that the, there are so much information today very easily you will get tired about this life that is good <laughs> <laughs> you know if you get tired that is good because why then you look for solutions okay mm-hmm. and other thing is and other thing is that during buddha's time it was not easy like this and he buddha had a very difficult time with even with the monks you know and they there were monks and they they didn't give up themselves and they went through you know a lot of arguments challenging to with the buddha and mm. it was not a very easy path for him to introduce this dharma mm. and uh, that uh, and another thing is there are a lot of people today getting benefit out of this environment we don't see and the very good example here with our sanat vihari i really proud of, you know about him and i know him personally yeah you know because he look at him you know he 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 went through deep, very different background and mm. today see where he is you know that transformation of life and it happens everywhere and especially after this covid situation people went to that mindfulness mindfulness practice and the people start to look for that uh, the what is this uh, immune system and how you can get healthy by yourself and develop a very sustainable way of you know healthy lifestyle and uh, more than any other time i think around the world the buddha statue you know everywhere the people buy it why because it, it they start to look into that mm. and uh, i think that that uh, that we don't see that that path and lot of people and learn about the life learn the buddha's teaching and they transform through this environment i think that is uh, one of the greater blessing that we all can experience and even look at ourselves that mm. uh, how we get the benefit you know yeah. we born in sri lanka and now we are in, in other side of the world and look that how many people and come and look for help and when and other thing is when it come to the truth so today there are so much informations and uh, the buddha teaching more than any other time everywhere it 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 is spread and people understanding it and all the science and the technology accepting it and mm-hmm. day by day day by day through this the timeline that we go through i think we have a great opportunity to 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 give the service to others and at the same time get the benefit out of that all the situations and become more better people ourselves and when it come to the, the 
the Buddha's essence of the teaching. It's a purification of our own mind. Yeah. I think we have so much opportunity for that. Yeah, I think uh, uh, there's a friend in, in, in who is watching in, on Facebook, uh, Vimal Jayakod, who is saying, but isn't it easier to practice now because of new technologies? Good example, this discussion, which we could not do before the internet was invented. That is so true. So thank you, uh, 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 Bante and thank you, Mr. Vimal Jayakod, for uh, making that comment. Uh, Bante Kusala, what's in your mind? Uh, do you think it's harder or do you have any, any other stories to share with us? Well, Bante, the, in that question somebody asked, uh, she asked if the Buddha lived in the forest secluded yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, he did not. Um, he lived in forest only occasionally and he came back into towns, villages, kingdoms and traveled all the time meeting new people, greeting them, and even visiting non-Buddhist places. And they welcomed him very well because he had this reputation for being the Buddha. Mm -hmm. They even knew the qualities the Buddha had, the nine qualities of the Buddha. So uh, I know I must say this as well, that when the Buddha um, was approached by Devadatta, the cousin monk of the Buddha, Mm -hmm. asking um, five requests. Uh, one of the demands was that monks must live in the forest mm. for a lifetime. The Buddha refused that. Um, he did not grant that permission mm -hmm. um, for practical reasons, because, you know, um, forests, you know, aren't the reason, you know, forests, it's not in the forest. It's actually how forestly that you make your mind mm. that you you know you bring the forest with you you bring the temple with you mm. and it is there you find uh, peace peace and harmony within mm. so uh if anyone claims that the buddha lived a secluded life only in the forest uh, that's not true but he avoided uh, chaos you know when there was so much noise even among the visitors that came to see the Buddha, um, the Buddha was like, no, ask them to be quiet. You know, I'll be happy to talk to them uh, when they are quiet. So Buddha preferred a quieter environment, even in the monasteries, town monasteries where he lived. Mm. There were busy kingdoms, you know, kings came to see the Buddha. Uh, and these rich business people came to see the Buddha and he treated them, uh, you know, he, they, there were times he lived in the forest and sometimes, you know, I remember the story of King Ajatasattu visiting the Buddha in the forest and thinking, what if my son lives in harmony, in peace, just like these monks, you know, he even, um, he questioned the minister um, the, his physician, Jivaka, bringing him to this place. You know, are you trying to trap me in some something? Because he had so much fear he was dealing with after his brutality of the way he treated his own father. Uh, but again, at that scene where he saw B Buddha, the Buddha and the monks living in, in a park, so deeply stilled and so calm, and that kind of intrigued him. He wanted his son to be just like these monks. Mm -hmm. So it didn't matter where the Buddha lived. In those places, there was silence, there was calmness, there was peace, and there was this energy that they felt. So uh, again, I think it is also the time that we should question about so many rituals and pujas and wasting food and all that we do in the name of Buddhism. I don't think the Buddha would appreciate this much of armies of pujas. Uh, he would encourage Pratipatti Puja, where we do more practice, and that becomes an offering to the Buddha. Mm -hmm. But why don't we see many Arahants now? Isn't that an interesting question to ask? You know, I think uh, because of all the comments given by the monks, I think I'm hoping to see many Arahants in the future. But although someone claims that they are an arahant, it's hard to believe they are uh, because of all the false arahants that are around 
claiming to be arahants, you know, claiming to be enlightened. So that's a problem. Okay. Um, I think, uh, so I think those are the points. Um, we also need to kind of be updated and uh, still strengthen our practice using any technology, anything that we have. The whole canon is translated into English and available online. And it's a matter of so much um, dealing with an infodemic, so, um, like a pandemic, you know, so much information coming our way and we have that knowledge, but we have less practice from within, um, inspiring us from within. Um, I think um, those are some points I'd like to share. Yeah. What we need is not arahants. I think what we need is people lit, lit alive who are alive and practicing the basic principles like five precepts. So with that, I'll end my comment. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you Matthew. And uh, uh, where about Chanda Ananda? Um, I know we had uh, we have many hands raised. Uh, uh, let's see, we, we are coming to the end of the discussion, but we can have extra five to six minutes and then we'll finish. Uh, Bhante Chandananda, what's your take on today's topic? Or what's in your oh, mind? Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, Bhante, so uh, my answer to the original question is uh, whether it is uh, more difficult to practice now when compared to the time of the Buddha. Actually, yeah. my answer time specific and also person specific mm -hmm. because uh, the uh, five faculties uh, five faculties and five powers those um, faith energy wisdom mindfulness etc those things should be balanced to have a very uh, a sustainable journey so if the particular person is striving too much i might say slow down slow down it is not the proper time to practice uh, like that. As an example, if somebody comes and sit under a pine tree, saying that I will not, uh, I will not rise from this seat unless I become enlightened, like the only only enlightened Buddha. I might say, oh my friend, it is not the time to practice um, in that way because uh, it is not the right right time to. Uh, it, it might not be the right time because uh, actually Venerable Brahmo Anso mm -hmm. had done that in his life, when uh, he, his lay life, and he failed. So, uh, but in most of the cases, our people are not energetic enough. So, when I meet uh, such people, I always tell them, now is the right time to practice. Mm. Why they are going to postpone? Now, as an example, uh, Actually, it is, uh, I can uh, provide such certain evidence uh, to tell you that uh, it is easy to practice now. As an example, uh, at the time of the Buddha, chances are very high that we were not even in the human realm to mm. get this holy message. Now we all of us in the human world. That is why we talk this spiritually enhancing talk and we share our wisdom and we have got a golden chance to practice. Now mm -hmm. it is easy to practice. Mm. And uh, Dhamma is well taught. And we are going to, with this well taught Dhamma, we can make things easy. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually once I saw a notable uh, famous uh, meditation teacher, Jack Cornfield, he has posted on his uh, Facebook, mm. difficulties make our path. I mm. really appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> difficulties make our path whenever there is difficulty there is time to practice there is a good chance to be to be a good buddhist mm -hmm. and now is the time to practice thank yeah. you very much thank you practicing dhamma is the most important it can dhamma can be practiced anytime it has no so um i know uh long island buddhist we have that is bante nanda bante nanda do you have anything to uh you raised your hand Thank you the uh, monks and uh, friends of the Dhamma. Yeah. It's a very uh, interesting discussion. You know, um, the Prince Siddhartha, while, uh, when he was uh, uh, doing his great renunciation on the way, he met the King Vinsa and he asked, Why, Prince, you are so young. Why you are doing this? Why you are going to the First, mm -hmm. you think, having seen them having sensual pleasures 
and have you seen detachment from sense desires? In search of eternal truth, I'm going to research of eternal truth and peace. If you compare with that, if you consider that what Prince Siddhartha taught, Prince Siddhartha said that time, this is the time, the better time to understand. Mm -hmm. we, can, we, can, we can see how this sensual process, the danger of sensual process, how, you know, Venerable Shanta Shodhana and Venerable Chantana, I agree with you, but you uh, emphasize, you mm -hmm. know, First, you have right effort and vision. This is the time, correct time to practice. Easy time to practice what Buddha does it. And I personally know there are lay people, lay community. I personally know some uh, well educated, well uh, educated uh, gentlemen, people who, are in, who, is, who, lives in, who live in Canada. USA and England, they practice very well, according to my understanding. You know, they wake up, they wake up early in the morning by 3 a.m. and do meditate, do practice meditation two hours. And they have very good life, including Tripitaka, Atua, Pika, and everything. And all the facilities are here. You know, those days, those if those who want to practice, you know, they have to uh, go arms round or they have to go to the forest and wander and find food and stuff. But mm -hmm. now they have you know enough facilities they can order and get everything to their house and their residence. And you know, and they can they can save their time and also they can find Kalyan Mitras here. You know, those who if you if you make a sign, if you make a note in social media, uh, I want to find this dumb point. You know, there are many people, many monks and many lay people to, uh, you know, give support and help. Like, uh, you know, they are, this is a very good, good opportunity, very good time to practice Dhamma, I can see. That, that's very interesting, Bhante and uh, Nanda. Uh, you know, uh, thank you so much for sharing uh, your thoughts uh, regarding today's uh, topic, and in in, in fact, uh, I'm very impressed to see uh, Bantinanda how you're uh, joining this program with your students uh, at the temple, <laughs> in, temple in <laughs> Long Island. Thank you so much. It's so interesting. You know, I'm so happy. Uh, so thank you. And uh, lastly, just uh, I know uh, uh, some monks actually highly talk about Bhante Sanata Vihari from Los Angeles. Uh, you being a Spanish monk uh, living in, in Hollywood, uh, mm -hmm. how do you see this? Do you think it's harder to uh, practice the Dhamma than the time of the Buddha? Uh, Bhante, I don't think so. As all the venerables have already said, they've stated the, all the benefits that we have now and all the cons and all the pros and cons during the time of the Buddha. If we look at the suttas, we also see that there was yeah. people partying in the forest, playing drums, getting drunk. You know, <laughs> there was people there was people committing adultery. I mean, p humans are humans. Nothing's changed. You know, the human kind of tendencies are there because of our kilesas, our asavas and all these kind of things. Maybe certain ones are kind of more pronounced during certain periods. Maybe we're in a more greed period and before we're maybe more in an aversion period. So maybe there's those kind of things, you know, that the environment can contribute to. But I think it really depends on what many of the venerables were saying here. Many of the bantas is one's own, you know, practice is the most important thing. One's own mind mm -hmm. is the most important thing. So we shouldn't be focused on the ataloka dhammas, you know. We should be yeah. really focusing on inside, like putase loka dhammehi chittam yasene kampati, like the, and so on and so on. I mm -hmm. think that's the important thing. And when we talked about Akaliko, it also reminded me of that, you know, that the Dhamma is timeless and the last words of the Buddha were, you know, Apamada Bhikkhus, and, you know, don't delay that the time mm -hmm. to practice is now. So I can't really say anything that the other Bhante said, but here in yeah. Hollywood, I think, you know, it's the same as, you know, um, in Magadha or in wherever else, you know, during the time of the Buddha, people are people and people are always going to be 
following their defilements. So there's no so difference. Do you think uh, practicing Dhamma in Hollywood is harder than practicing Dhamma in Sri Lanka? <laughs> or <laughs> <laughs> I think some parts because you know in Sri Lanka you may get caught up with all the pujas and the pujas themselves can become like a silabata paramasa. <laughs> so like it can be a hindrance. Yeah. Uh, so it you know each environment has its own particular difficulties, pros and cons. So you just have to be aware of them. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Bhante Sanadu Hari. And thank you, venerable uh, uh, colleagues, uh, our monks and nuns, for uh, making such a great contribution today regarding today's topic. And uh, people greatly appreciated your words of wisdom, your stories. And of course, we can uh, have more discussions about this, but we don't have enough time. So now I would like to respectfully invite Bhante Uparatana. Uh, Nayaka Mahathir from Washington, D.C. to recite the uh, Ova the Fatima verses today, <laughs> Bhante. Thank you, Venerable Brother, monks and nuns. Today is a wonderful, beautiful thing. We're just starting. We have to continue that thing. Very wonderful. Wish you everybody healthy, wealthy, and success with the peace. Namo tas bhagavato arehato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arehato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arehato Samma Sambuddhas Sab Papas Akarnam Kusalas Upasampada Sachit Pariyodapanam Etam buddhan sasanam Hanti paraman tapo titika Nibbanam paraman vadanti buddha Nahi pab jito parup ghati Samanu hoti parang vihet yanto Anup vado anup ghato Pati mokhe cha sangvaro Matanyuta cha phantha summing phantha cha sayana sanang adhichitnti cha ayogo etang buddhan sasanang Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Bhante Uparatana, for beautiful reciting the Vada Patimaka verses. It always reminds me of going back to the time of the Buddha, <laughs> as if uh, Buddha or Buddha's disciples recited these verses. So it's, so it's a meditation practice for us. And today I'm very uh, grateful to all our uh, venerable uh, brothers and sisters and also to our lay friends uh, uh, who watched us on YouTube and Facebook Live, and also our friends who joined us on Zoom platform. It was such a beautiful discussion uh, that uh, shed, uh, this discussion shed more light with respect to today's uh, topic. Uh, and of course, Dhamma can be practiced anytime, it's a Kalika. So uh, I would like to uh, bring the blessings of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha to all of you for your health and safety, for your long life. May Deva, celestial beings, continue to protect and guard you. And may all blessings be with you. With this in mind, now let us uh, wind this up. And I will see you all in two weeks time. Until then, all of you stable and happy. Good night. Thank you. Wow.